guys, good morning. So we're up in the Versailles garden working on several different things that I want to talk to you about. Um, first of all, we've got some gorgeous flowers we're going to be putting in the ground. We've got Supertunia Limoncello, Dark Knight Alyssum. I think this is a beautiful blend together. Uh, we're going to start with the area right around the urn here. You can see the tulips are done blooming. Uh, many of them are starting to yellow and wither away, so it's about time that we can remove the foliage. And I've seen lots of questions about whether or not it's okay to plant over the top of tulip bulbs. And if it's okay, how do you do that? So I'll show you how I do it. I um, have had really great success with it throughout the years. I'm also gonna be trimming up these boxwoods for the very first time. You might remember when we planted these, they were little, like little tiny baby sprinter boxwoods. And they've grown beautifully. I mean, they've put on a tremendous amount of growth even just this spring. Um, so I do start wanting to train them into somewhat of a hedge. It won't be, you know, a really tight hedge yet, but we'll get there probably pretty quick here. The other area is around Persephone. So I did come out last night. You can see I still have my bucket, my uh, pop-up bag. I did a little trimming on these boxwoods here um, just so that they were a nice shape. And then we're gonna plant Supertunia Vista Paradise all around each one of these boxwoods. Just one plant because I think it'll be extremely striking. And this area is interesting because we have to be very mindful of what we put in this area because it gets overhead water. And there's not like a ton of things that really love to be watered from overhead. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the Vista Supertunia. We've tried other Supertunias in here, but not a Vista. Um, so the other thing I want to talk about is what you do with plants that have gone leggy like this. Um, so we will get to that when we get to this area. So let's start with the tulips. You can see on the foliage right here, it's starting to yellow and die back a little bit, which is a sign that they're ready to be cut back. Um, not all of them are looking exactly like that, but I know that they're really soon to follow what this bunch is looking like. And we usually leave the foliage up until it starts to wither like that, because until that point, those leaves are absorbing sunshine, which turns into energy, which feeds the bulb, which makes them perform better the next year, helps them naturalize and form more blooms. Um, so when we go in to cut them back, we just grab the bunch and just cut it back to the ground. I like to leave just about, I don't know, half inch or an inch or so. That way I can see where the tulips are and I can avoid them when I'm planting my annuals. And that's basically all there is to it. There's no secret to planting annuals over tulip bulbs. I just try to miss where the tulip bulbs are and I've never had a problem when I pull the annuals out having them pull any bulbs out or anything like that. I suppose it's possible, um, but in this spot, I've never had that happen. So now I'm just gonna cut all the rest of these tulips back and then we'll work on the boxwoods next. are done so essentially what it looks like we're left with is the denim and lace russian sage which grows about two and a half feet tall and wide it's perfect the perfect height in here because it gets about this tall and you can still see the urn and it blooms all summer long through frost and then we've got our boxwood hedge so what i'm going to do is just take a light layer off of the outer portion here and the inner portion and then just top them a little bit they won't be completely even because they're not even as you can see um, but i think what it'll do is it'll encourage them to thicken up a little bit and put on a little bit more uh, side sideways horizontal growth and kind of broaden out a little bit um, if you do not have a battery operated hedger i would highly recommend you get one but you can use hedge trim just you know manual operated which i think is actually better um, for your boxwoods because it doesn't tend to bruise the foliage quite as much um, but we have too many boxwoods it would take me forever to do that so i find these super handy <laughs> to look so much better just tidying up those boxwoods a little bit just gives it that sense of structure for me and we're not going for perfection at this stage of their growth because clearly you know there's space between most of them still but just cleaning them up a little bit will encourage that outer growth and it gives you a sense of what i'm going for in the end like you can kind i can kind of see where it's headed um, so now all we have left to do is plant so i want to show you a little bit closer up what these plants look like so we've got the Supertunia Limoncello. I'm a huge fan of this soft, buttery color. And then we've got Dark Knight Lobularia or Sweet Alyssum. And I think that these are gonna do really, really well together. Um, this is gonna be an experiment with the Limoncello though. We did have it planted by Persephone last year, but like I said, it does get overhead water 
and it gets a lot of water. So the limoncello held up for most of the season, but by the very end, you could tell it was kind of suffering a little bit. Like we just couldn't control the amount of water because we have a lot of grass around this area. But this area right here, we had drip run to it so we can control the amount of moisture. It's not gonna get overhead water. So I think it's gonna do a lot better. And then this one right here will be a little bit shorter. So we'll have our upper story plant. These grow about six to 10 inches tall. And then the, the um, dark night grows about four to six inches tall. So I hope that they'll intermingle. Like I can see it in my head how they should look. Now this super tunia right here doesn't trail as much as some of the other varieties. It's not like a Vista. If you get a super tunia Vista, I mean, those just trail out huge. These stay a little bit more compact, um, but I think that's gonna be good for this area because I don't really want them trailing all over the place. I want it to be a little bit more um, manicured looking in the end. So I'm gonna kind of space these out every other or so so that we have a really good blend. And then I will be tossing a little bit of slow release plant food in each hole and then we'll mulch. all done boxwoods trimmed flowers planted all mulched and i am just such a huge fan of this color combination that light yellow with the purple and if it does what i think it's going to do i think it's going to be just a brilliant beautiful show especially once that denim and lace russian sage starts blooming and it blooms that kind of light lavender color it's just going to be beautiful and i was hoping to outrun the sun but we're now in full sun which is okay it's what the plants love um, okay, so now we're gonna work on the Supertunia Vista Paradise. And I wanted to talk to you guys about what you do if you have a plant that kind of looks like this. Like if you find something that you've been really looking for and you haven't been able to find it at a garden center and you happen upon it and it looks kind of leggy, don't shy away from it. It's not a big deal. All you have to do is come in and give it just a little bit of a haircut because I don't really want to it to be putting energy into these really long um, kind of leggy branches. I want it to like, stool out and be thicker so I'm just gonna come in it's gonna sacrifice a few blooms these look okay uh, and just give it a light haircut so now the root system can send energy into creating a thicker fuller plant with more fresh blooms and it's just really good for the plant so you know even though we sacrifice two little blooms and a couple buds it's not a big deal and it's better for the health of your plant so I just wanted to talk to you about that and oftentimes we have to give our hanging baskets and plants like this our annual plants a haircut midsummer anyway um, so this is just kind of that's how you do it there's really no rhyme or reason you just kind of take them down um, to where it looks really nice for the whole plant so let me do one more so look at this thing <laughs> this one is a wild one so I'm just going to take these branches down a bit oops Kind of like that so it already looks nicer and thicker and then um, we can expect a lot of new growth here really soon so i'm just going to space these out in this area around each one of these boxwoods now i don't think i'm going to need an enormous amount um, because these do grow quite big they are a super tunia vista which means they're really good for landscape planting they can usually hold up to more uh, difficult conditions in terms of water and things like that so i'm really hopeful that these will be beautiful so let's plant area is going to look so pretty. I think the thing I like about this Vista Paradise is that the pink is just such an unusual color. I mean, it's very like tropical. -y. Well, I guess the name kind of says it's paradise. Um, so it's a very striking different color of pink. And for all the pink flowers that I plant on this property, I've never planted pink up here. So I'm really looking forward to that, especially because we just did all one color. So it's gonna be this huge striking block of color, I, I'm hoping. Now I am skipping mulch on this part. The only reason why I did mulch around the urn was because we had drip lines we needed to cover and I didn't want that infrastructure, the watering infrastructure to be showing 
We don't have drip lines in this area because it's all overhead water because of all the grass around it. Um, also, once these supertunias get going, I mean, it won't take them long, they will cover the soil surface and they'll almost act as a mulch in and of themselves because mulch helps with keeping moisture in the soil and helping suppress weeds. I don't need any help keeping moisture in this soil up here, um, but once the supertunias grow out and cover the soil surface, they will help to suppress weeds. Um, I will be fertilizing these on a weekly basis with water-soluble fertilizer because plants that you want to really grow big, you do have to feed them quite a lot. And I did not have to cut back very many of these supertunias. There were only a few of them that were extra leggy. The rest of them look really good. Um, and I think I planted approximately between 16 and 20 in each one of these. Um, triangles, 16 around the bigger boxwoods, 20 around the smaller boxwoods, uh, and I think they're going to fill in really quick and we'll have a good show for the entire summer. So that's it you guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing both of these planting projects. I'm really looking forward to giving you updates as the season progresses um, and I hope it was helpful kind of seeing how we plant around tulips and you know seeing the whole boxwood progression. I always enjoy seeing that in other people's gardens. It gives me hope for like the areas I'm just starting because I see people you know all of us have little spots in our gardens that are in progress. We're never done. I mean, gardens are just never done. That's how it is. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.